In a quiet underground lab beneath Geneva, the year is 2600. The room is dim, humming with electromagnetic resonance. At its center, a device, roughly the size of a bathroom mirror, rests on a sleek black pedestal. It's called the Temporal Reflector. A revolutionary breakthrough in quantum optics and relativistic light capture. Developed by theoretical physicist Dr. Olivia Marin, the reflector doesn't take you back in time. It shows you the past, your past, by capturing and reconstructing photons that once bounced off your body, your surroundings, your very presence. Photons, light particles, don't just disappear. They scatter, travel, and stretch across the universe. But in theory, they still carry the imprint of where they've been. The temporal reflector is designed to locate those photons, pull them back into alignment, and project them onto its surface like a living reflection. Olivia, ever the perfectionist, decides to run a personal test. She sets the reflector to a familiar timestamp, exactly one year ago, in that same lab when she was still developing the first prototype. She'd spent countless hours during that phase, troubleshooting, writing code, making adjustments. Now she was curious to observe herself in the middle of that process. She calibrates the machine, adjusts the temporal parameters. The interface displays the chosen date and location. The system locks in. The glass flickers to life. There she is, her past self, bent over a terminal, making calculations, it's surreal, like watching a recording, but this isn't playback. This is reconstructed reality, reassembled from the actual photons that once carried this moment through space. She watches quietly for a few minutes. Then something catches her eye. A line of code, small but significant. A mathematical oversight she remembers struggling with. At the time, it had slowed progress for weeks. But now, with hindsight, she spots the error instantly. One simple correction could have dramatically improved the design. Driven by curiosity, Olivia scribbles the corrected equation on a sheet of paper. No real plan, just a spontaneous test. She walks back to the reflector and holds up the paper, making sure the equation is clearly visible through the surface. And her past self notices. The woman in the glass lifts her head, squints, walks closer. She reads the equation. And without hesitation, she turns to the console and makes the correction in real time. What happens next is subtle, but immediate. The machine Olivia is currently using, the original version flickers. Briefly unstable. Then it changes. The frame shifts. The interface refreshes. The old reflector is gone. In its place is a new version, sleeker, more advanced, more efficient. Olivia never built this version, but somehow it now exists. The only reason this upgraded model was created is because her past self saw the correction. But that correction only reached the past through the original machine, the one that no longer exists. So where did the idea actually come from? This right here is known as the bootstrap paradox, a mind-bending time loop where cause and effect collapse into one another. An idea or object exists, but without any clear origin, a closed causal loop, no beginning, no end. It's one of the strangest implications of hypothetical time travel, and it's not just a storytelling device. It's a direct challenge to how we understand causality, information, and even the structure of time itself. When Olivia stood there, staring at the machine that shouldn't exist, one built from a correction she never originally discovered, it quietly revealed something far deeper than just an upgraded prototype. What happened wasn't just strange, it was impossible, at least according to how we normally understand time, no one invented that new version of the reflector. No one consciously wrote that equation. And yet, it existed. It looped into being. That's what the bootstrap paradox is all about. 
and it is also no as causal loop. It violates what we consider the normal order of cause and effect. In Olivia's case, the reflector's improved version only exists because the past saw a correction from the future. That correction, however, didn't originate in a notebook or an epiphany. It was never created. It was just inherited through time. You might have seen versions of this in fiction. Like in Doctor Who, when a character gives Beethoven's symphony to Beethoven, who then becomes famous for writing music he never actually composed. Or in Tenet, where characters encounter objects with no clear point of manufacture, just a timeline they loop through. It's fascinating, and it poses a real question. Can information or objects exist without ever being made, according to our best understanding of physics? Maybe. The math doesn't completely forbid it, but philosophically, it's unsettling. It challenges our entire sense of logic, history, and authorship. But there's a reason these loops can't just happen all the time, and it has to do with the nature of time itself. Because time, as we experience it, doesn't move in circles. It moves forward, always forward. That's what physicists call the arrow of time. It's the idea that time has a direction, not because clocks tick or planets orbit, but because the universe insists on going from order to disorder, from simplicity to complexity, from clean labs to chaotic timelines. We don't remember the future, only the past. We can't unbreak a glass or unburn a candle. The universe pushes forward in this irreversible march. But why? The answer lies in something invisible, but powerful. Entropy. Entropy is the measure of how disordered a system is. It's not just messiness. It's the number of possible ways something can be arranged. A neat deck of cards has low entropy, a shuffled one, high entropy. The more possibilities, the more disorder. Now, the second law of thermodynamics says that in a closed system, entropy can only increase or stay the same. It never decreases. This law is why we see time flow in one direction. It's not that time itself is pushing forward, it's that entropy is increasing and we're just riding that wave. The future holds more disorder than the past. That's why we can remember childhood but not retirement. Why Olivia could watch the past but couldn't predict the future. The reflector worked because photons, the particles of light, scatter in predictable ways. They hold the history of what they touched. But the future hasn't happened yet. Its photons don't exist. There's no light trail to follow forward. The trail only leads backward, because entropy has already been recorded there. This makes entropy not just a concept in thermodynamics, but a kind of clock for the universe. It defines the flow of time, and without entropy increasing, time would have no arrow. In fact, if entropy could decrease, time might flow backward, or at least become meaningless. The universe would look like a loop of indistinguishable states. Which brings us back to Olivia's lab. Her reflector didn't violate the arrow of time. It didn't let her travel backward. It just captured a shadow of the past, a picture carved in light, made visible again through precise physics. A clever use of relativistic optics, but still constrained by entropy's rules. But entropy and causality aren't the only forces shaping time. Time isn't as rigid as we think, and to see that we have to go deeper into Einstein's theory of general relativity. Here's the idea in simple terms. Time doesn't move the same for everyone. It stretches, bends, and slows down depending on how fast you move and how close you are to gravity. Let's break that down. If you're standing on Earth and your twin is flying near the speed of light in a spaceship, when they return, they'll be younger than you. Not because of some trick, but because their time literally passed more slowly. This is called time dilation, and it's been measured. Satellites orbiting Earth have clocks that tick slightly faster than those on the ground, because they're farther from gravity's pull. 
engineers have to factor that into GPS systems, or else your location data would slowly drift out of sync. That means time, our most normal constant, isn't constant at all. It flexes. This is also why black holes are so strange. Near a black hole, gravity is so intense that time essentially stops for an outside observer. If you watched someone fall into a black hole, you'd see them freeze in place, forever. And Olivia's work taps into this too. The reflector is based on photons, particles of light that obey relativistic rules. By working with light that's been traveling across space and distorted by time and gravity, she's essentially manipulating the very texture of space-time. That's why her device doesn't just see the past, it decodes the path light took through curved space-time, a journey influenced by entropy, gravity, and the flow of time itself. So, when we tie all these concepts together, causal loops, entropy, relativity, it paints a picture of time that's far more intricate than most of us imagine. Time isn't a river flowing forward, it's a web, a field, a structure that stretches, twists, and occasionally folds in on itself. And sometimes, within its folds, ideas or events appear that shouldn't be possible, like a correction with no origin, or a machine built from its own future. But we've only scratched the surface because there's one more layer to time we haven't touched yet, the realm of the very small, where things get fuzzy, unpredictable, and downright strange. Quantum mechanics. And in that strange quantum world, time doesn't behave the way it does here. So what happens when we look at time there? Let's find out. At the heart of Olivia Marin's temporal reflector is one overlooked mystery. The moment she saw the past, was it always there, or did her observation create it? This question doesn't just tap into science fiction, it touches a nerve at the center of modern physics and philosophy, and it all starts with one of the most fascinating ideas in quantum mechanics. The observer effect. In quantum theory, the world isn't as solid or predictable as it seems. Particles like photons, electrons, and atoms exist in a haze of probability, not certainty. Until they are measured, their position, speed, or even existence remains undefined. This is known as superposition. Think of it this way. Imagine flipping a coin and refusing to look at the result. As far as quantum theory is concerned, that coin is both heads and tails at once, until the moment you look. That moment of observation collapses the possibilities into a single outcome. One of the best-known metaphors for this is Schrodinger's cat, a cat placed in a sealed box, alive and dead at the same time, until you peek inside. Observation determines reality. But what happens when this concept is applied to time? if particles can exist in a blurry, undefined state in space? Could events themselves remain blurry in time? Could the past exist in a kind of quantum fog, waiting to be observed and only becoming real once it is? Some scientists believe it's possible. Enter a bizarre and controversial idea in quantum physics. Retrocausality, the concept that a future event can influence the past. It sounds backward, because it is. But certain interpretations of quantum mechanics, including the transactional interpretation, suggest that the future and past can communicate through waves of probability. In this view, causality isn't one way. Observation doesn't just affect what happens. It might ripple backward, tweaking what already happened. In Olivia's case, her act of observing the past through the temporal reflector wasn't passive. When she showed her past self the corrected equation, that information wasn't supposed to exist in the earlier timeline. And yet, somehow, it did. This introduces a paradox, a loop of logic with no clear starting point. The formula was created because it was seen, and it was seen because it already existed. This is where physics dives headfirst into the weird, 
Welcome to the world of closed time-like curves, or CTCs. A closed time-like curve is a hypothetical path through space-time that loops back on itself. Einstein's general theory of relativity allows for these loops under certain extreme conditions, such as near-rotating black holes, wormholes, or exotic matter with negative energy density. One of the first mathematical models for a time loop came from Kurt Gödel in 1949. He imagined a rotating universe in which time could bend back on itself. It's a strange idea, but Einstein didn't reject it outright. Mathematically, it worked. But the deeper question is this. If you can send information or objects back into the past, where did they originally come from? A loop with no beginning, no end only existence. This isn't just philosophy. It touches on major challenges in black hole physics, where scientists wrestle with the information paradox. When something falls into a black hole, does the information it contains get destroyed forever? According to quantum physics, information should never be lost. But according to classical general relativity, it might be. This conflict sits at the center of one of modern physics' biggest debates. Some researchers, including Stephen Hawking and Leonard Susskind, propose that information might be encoded on the surface of the black hole, not inside it, leading to ideas like the holographic principle. These ideas might sound distant from time loops, but they're not. In both cases, we're dealing with the survival and origins of information across space and time. Now, let's go even deeper. There's a more fundamental question we haven't asked yet. What is time? Really? There are two major schools of thought. The first is called presentism. It says that only the present moment is real. The past is gone and the future doesn't exist yet. This is how we feel time. It's how our minds perceive the world, moving forward through a flowing river of moments. In Olivia's story, this is the intuitive view. She looks at the past as something behind her, reachable only through technology. But the second model, the block universe, says something far more radical. It claims that the past, present, and future are all equally real. Time isn't something that flows. It's something that is. Like pages in a book, every moment exists permanently. We just move through them in sequence. In this model, there's no changing the past, because everything that ever happened is part of a fixed, four-dimensional structure. Olivia didn't create a new outcome. She always gave herself the formula. That action is simply woven into the tapestry of space-time. In fact, if you rewind far enough, you'll see. There was no first time she discovered the formula. It was always a part of the loop. This view of time turns reality into something static, almost deterministic. It raises unsettling questions. Do we really have free will? Or are we just walking along a path that's already written? Even more unsettling, some physicists propose that our perception of time, the sensation of now, might just be a psychological illusion, a byproduct of how our brains process change. So, when Olivia stared into the reflector, what did she truly see? Not just her past, she glimpsed a fundamental flaw in how we understand time, the illusion of cause and effect, the blur between observation and reality, and the possibility that the universe writes itself in loops, not lines. She didn't just break causality, she exposed it. And in doing so, she reminded us of a deeper truth. Sometimes the answers we seek have no beginning, no source, no why. They simply are. Thank you for watching. If this exploration of time, causality, and the nature of reality blew your mind even a little, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to Uncharted Odyssey and turn on notifications. We're just getting started. Reality is far stranger than fiction, and together, we'll keep diving deeper into the unknown. Until next time, keep wondering.